So the handout you have in front of you is on the Hifil stem. I'm going to cover the Hifil stem and then the Hofal stem, but uh, in this session, we're just going to deal with the Hifil uh, first. And um, the Hifil is often referred to as the causative stem, the causative stem. That is, your, uh, when you use a verb in the Hifil, most frequently it has the sense of to cause someone to do the action that the verbal root represents. So um, the way one of the grammars puts it is uh, the, the subject of a hifil verb causes another undersubject to perform or undergo the verbal action. For example, if we have this uh, verb moot, so there's moot here on your handout. In the cal stem, it means to die, okay? If I were to put that verb in the hifil stem, it means to cause someone to die. So some subject causes some under subject to die. So who's dying? Someone else besides the subject of the hifil verb, okay? So if you um, look at the English example, uh, if I were translating the hifil form of the verb to die with this, this subject and this object, it would be John caused Billy to die. John caused Billy to die. So the main subject is John, but John is causing some other subject, which is being described here as the under subject, to undergo the verbal action, all right? And another way to frame this is to, to translate it as John killed Billy, okay? So if I die, that's intransitive. If I kill someone, I'm causing them to die, that becomes transitive, and I'm going to have a direct object here, okay? So uh, that's just a basic idea of the HIFIL um, stem in terms of the semantics. There's some other semantics that are involved. We'll look at those uh, a little bit later. What we want to deal with, first of all, is how to form the HIFIL stem, okay? And uh, here's the real key. In the HIFIL stem, the form is characterized by a prefix hey. That prefix hey is, uh, is characteristic of the HIFIL. So think about the name HIFIL. Do you see the H in HIFIL? That's supposed to tell you. You've got a, 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 a hey prefix uh, that's going to go before root one. Uh, but that prefix hey will not be visible in the prefix conjugations. That is to say, anytime I have a nutty prefix, I'm not going to see the hey. And in the participle, I'm going to have a prefix mem, and so the, uh, the hey will be missing as well. So let's take a look at uh, the, the hifil here. And um, I have a mistake here, so just cross this out, okay? We're not dealing with the hithpael. Forgot to delete that. Uh, the hifil meaning of pakad means to cause, to visit, or to cause, to appoint, okay? And, of course, there's going to be some direct object, to cause someone to visit or appoint, okay? All right. So what we'll do is we'll just walk through the principal parts here and look at uh, the first form. I have hif keyed. So you see the three root letters are pay kof dalit. What is the prefix before root one in the hifil? It's a hey. Okay. What kind of vowel class goes under the hey prefix? That is an I class vowel. Okay, that's important because that's similar to the PL. Remember the PL has an I class vowel too but only in one place. Where? In the PL perfect. In all the other forms of the PL, wherever I had an I-class vowel, I got an A-class vowel. Well, look, this is true in the, um, the HIFIL. I have an I-class vowel in the perfect. Where else do I have a hey? The imperative, but notice it's A-class. The infinitive construct, my vowel is A-class under the hey, and the infinitive absolute, the hey prefix has an A-class vowel there. So it's only in the HIFIL perfect where I actually see the I-class vowel. Uh, elsewhere, it's an A-class vowel. Okay. Now, the theme vowel, the root vowel with root 2, is what vowel? Kyrick yod. What vowel class is that? That is also I-class. So in the perfect, it's characterized by I-class vowels under both the prefix A and the theme vowel the root two vowel, okay? Now, that's when I have no inflectional endings here. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the, um, the next page. You can look at Ross page 212 
to actually see what all the forms are. I'm not going to write them all in here, okay? But we'll do several of them. So the hyphal perfect is characterized by what prefix letter? Hey. So all my forms will have a prefix hey. What vowel goes under the prefix hey? Kyrick. Okay, so I'm going to see Kyrick's all throughout. And then what goes under root 1 in every case? That's right. That is a silent shiva because I've got a short vowel, a kyrick, to the right. Okay, so it is always a closed syllable. The hey prefix and root 1 are closing a syllable. They are happily married, okay? Closed and married. Nothing changes here. Hif, 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 hif. Okay? Now, what is my theme vowel in the 3MS perfect? Kyrick yod. Notice I've given you some room for that Kyrick yod to go there. What is the 3FS form? In the perfect, I always add a comma te, right? And here, it's going to be a Kyrick yod as well. So it's hif keed, he caused to visit. Hif kida, where's my accent? It's on the, the Kyrick yod, so hif kida. So I need an accent mark there because it's not the final syllable, which is where I normally stress unless I have an accent mark. Hif kida, she caused someone to visit. Now look at the 2MS form. You would expect another Kyrick here, but just like in the PL, what am I going to get under root 2 when I add these consonantal endings? It's going to become a pathak. Hif kadta. Hif kad. Do I have to put an accent mark there? No, because no, I have two silent shavas. This actually is the final syllable, isn't it? So I don't need to write it down. And then what would be the first common singular? Hif kad t. All right. So those are the forms there. On the third common plural, hif kidu. Okay. So do you see the difference here? When my suffixes for the perfect conjugation are vocalic, that is, if the suffixes are vowels, I retain the kyrick yod. If I have consonantal endings, then I get the pathak there. Okay? So that's the, uh, the hyphal perfect. Now let's go back to the principal parts. <clears throat> Look at the imperfect. The imperfect does not have the hey prefix because I've got the imperfect nutty prefix to go with it. And um, it's going to be yaf keed. Yaf keed. So the characteristic kyrick yod of the hyphal theme vowel is here, but I've got my nutty prefix. My nutty prefixes are noon, tav, yod, olive, right? One of those four with what kind of vowel under it? That's a pathak and that's a class. Okay. Now, where did this A class come from? Here is what this form really should have been. It would have been Y Hof Kied. Y Hof Kied. This is sort of like the Lamed preposition with the article Hey. Remember what Lamed preposition does to an article Hey? Swallows it up, right? Technically, this is called syncopation. The Hey syncopates, it drops out. Uh, so the yod here is basically going to swallow the hay, uh, and it's going to ditch its vocal shiva and slide over and take the hay's place so that I'm left with yaf kid. Okay? So that's what's happened here. In other words, that vocal shiva under the yod is like the, the imperfect of the PL. It had a vocal shiva under it as well. But when the hay syncopates, the vocal shiva drops out and the yod takes the the Hayes Pathak, okay? So uh, so it becomes Yafkid. Then I just change the prefixes to get the other forms, Yafkid, Tafkid, Tafkid, and, and so forth, okay? So uh, just keep in mind that we're going to start seeing A-class vowels under the prefixes in the Hifil, except for the perfect. It's Hay prefix gets the I-class. All right? So... Uh, real quickly, let's just look at the imperfect and we'll write in a couple of these examples. If you know all of your nutty prefixes for the imperfect, you could write them in yourself, right? Yod, tav, 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 aleph. 
What's the vowel under each of these imperfect prefixes? It's an A-class vowel, pathak, right? What goes under root one? It's always a silent shiva. Okay, and then what's the theme vowel? Kirikyod, in every case. Kirikyod, kirikyod, kirikyod. Now the 2FS for you woman will do something is a kirikyod. That is a vocalic ending, isn't it? And so my kirikyod is going to want to stay here. So, and then of course my begatka fat consonants need their dagesh lene here. Okay. So repeat the forms with me. Yafkid is he will cause to a point. Tafkid, she will cause to a point. Tafkid and tafkidi. Accent's going to be on the kof. You, male, female, will cause to a point. And then, afkid. I will cause to a point. Afkid. That sounds like the way I sing my songs, right? Very afkid. Okay. So you could fill in your own things here. The, the one thing that's um, uh, different, if you look at the 2FP and uh, 3FP on the, uh, on the Ross chapter, notice that uh, you have taf, not keyed because this is a consonantal ending. So I'm going to have a closed syllable here and it's going to be the sere. So taf kadena. Taf kadena. Can you still parse that? Yes. What vowel class is the theme vowel here? It's I class, which is characteristic of the hifil. And what vowel class is the imperfect prefix here? It's A class, which is also characteristic of the hifil. Okay? So you, you could still parse that. All right. So um, that's the imperfect. Now, back over here to the uh, the uh, Hifil principal parts. Uh, the next uh, form that we have in the principal parts is the WCI or the Vayiktol 3MS. And if you look here at the the form, normally the imperfect and the WCIs are identical, except here. This is one of those places where the imperfect and the WCI are not the same form. Kirik Yod, th throughout most of our forms, but notice that I have a Sere here instead of the Kirik Yod. Okay? So the WCI is one of several places in the Hifil stem where the uninflected form, meaning the form with no inflectional suffixes, the uninflected form has a Sere instead of the Kirik Yod. There are several places where this happens. So let's look very carefully. In the WCI, when there's no inflectional ending, the uh, the vowel is sere, which is still I class, by the way. In the jussive, the jussive is usually identical to the imperfect, but in the hifil, the imperfect and the jussive are distinguishable by the uh, the short, or excuse me, the uh, the sere versus the kyrrhic yod. The cohortative does not have the sere; it's got a kyrrhic yod here, but it's because it is inflected on the end. You see. The imperative is got the sere instead of the kyrrhic yod. And then there's one more place, and that is the infinitive absolute. Okay? So four places show sere instead of kyrrhic yod. Again, that's the WCI, the jussive, the imper imperative, and the infinitive absolute. Everywhere else, my basic forms in the uh, the hifil are kyrrhic yod theme vowels instead of sere. All of these, kyrrhic yod or sere, are I class, okay? So <clears throat> the characteristic of the hifil having an I class theme vowel is still the same. It's just a question of whether the I class vowel is a kyrrhic yod or a sere. All right. So when it's uninflected, it's sere. Everything else here is the same as the imper imperfect, right? Va, yaf. Here's yaf, pathak, silent shiva. That's all normal for the WCI. I've got the vav with the pathak and the doubling dot. That's all normal. Sere, though, is the theme vowel. When I need to add an inflectional ending here, especially that vocalic ending, what's going to happen? I'm going to get the kyrrhic yod of the standard theme vowel. That's going to reappear where the sere was. This sere only happens 
as the uninflected form, okay? And then I'm going to see my, my Akira code returning uh, for the other forms. Let's take a look at the page two, and we'll write in the two examples here, a couple of examples. For the hifil, vayiktol, or WCI, I got my vav pathak, yod will get its doubling dot. What vowel do I get under the prefix? It's a pathak, root one, silent shiva. And what was my vowel under root two in the hifil WCI? Not kirik yod, but sere, vayafkade, vayafkade. He caused someone to appoint. Now, if I do the 3MP form, it's going to be va, yaf, silent shva, and instead of k do, have that shurik for 3MP, the kirik yod, accented by the way, va, yaf, kidu, that is going to reappear. So uninflected backside, sere, instead of kirik yod, but when I inflect, the good old Kirik Yod that I expected to be there over here does reappear. So Vayaf Kidu, Vayaf Kidu, and they caused someone to appoint. All right, let's go back to the chart. The Jessiv 3MS, let him cause to appoint, is almost the same as the imperfect fill, same prefix, Pathak, same Shiva, silent under root one, but the Sere instead of the Kirik Yod. The imperfect and just of are distinguishable. This is when I have no inflectional suffix. If I add uh, a, an inflectional uh, suffix for the other person's genders and numbers that actually do those, I could see the Kirik Yod reappearing here. So, Yaf Kade, let him cause someone to a point. Let's write in a few of the examples here. So, the Hifil Justive 3 ms is ya, a class vowel under the prefix, silent shiva, and then again we get that sere here, yafkade, yafkade, the 2ms, may you appoint, cause to appoint, would be tafkade. Remember, there's no inflectional suffix here, so the sere stays put in the jessive, okay? For the 3MP jessive, if I add the kirik yod, I'm now adding an inflectional suffix, Yaf kade becomes yaf kidu. Yaf kidu. All right. So here my Kira code re returns and uh, have the inflectional ending. Yaf kidu. Let them cause to a point. And then the 2MP is tof. Remember, yod switches to tav. Tof. And with my shurik, I'm going to have that Kira code reappearing. Tof kidu. May you all cause to a point. Okay, now let's go back to the cohortative on the principal parts sheet. The cohortative, 1CS, is off kita. So notice I have my prefix olive because that's characteristic of the cohortative. Cohortatives are first person, A class vowel, silent shiva, kiric, excuse me, comete on the end of a cohortative. So a first person prefix, comete on the backside, since this is inflected. I don't have a sere, but a kirik yod. So, af kita. Af kita. And that's let me, or may I, cause to a point. Okay? Remember, the first common singular is not the only cohortative. I also have first common plural. So, if that were a prefix noon, it would be a cohortative 1CP in the hifil. Naf kita. So, let's look at the form down on page two. The hifil cohortative 1CS. I have my prefix Aleph, comma, te, vowel pointing though for the hifil, A class. Root one gets silent shiva. Root two, kirik yod. Off, kita. And for the first common plural, it's exactly the same except for a noon instead of the Aleph. So, naf, kita. May we cause to a point. Off, kita, may I cause to a point. The imperative of the, uh, the hifil has a prefix hey, but instead of an I-class vowel like the hifil perfect, I get an A-class vowel. So not hi, but ha. So haf, kade, and again, 
the imperative is one of the serre forms instead of the curic yod forms when I have no inflectional ending. So remember, the imperative has no nutty prefixes. So all the imperative forms will have this hifil hey. We will not change that from one person to the other, but we do change the, uh, the, the endings for the imperative to indicate whether the U is masculine or feminine, singular or plural. So hafkade, this would be the command, cause to appoint. Hey you, cause Johnny to appoint someone. Okay, so let's take a look at the forms on page two. The hifil imperative will have that hey prefix in all forms and a silent shiva under root one. Haf, 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 haf. Okay? But the 2ms form is uninflected and it's one of the sere forms instead of the kirik yod. So haf kade, the 2fs gets a kirik yod ending that is inflected, so the sere switches back to the Kyrick Yod that I'm looking for, and I'm going to stress that Kyrick Yod. Haf Kiri. Haf Kiri. So, hey man, Haf Kade. Hey you, uh, cause someone to appoint. Haf Kiri. Hey woman, cause someone to appoint. How will I tell a group of men to do this? It's Haf, you got it. Haf Kidu. Haf Kidu. You guys, cause someone to appoint. And then for the 2FP form, I'm going to get a sere here, just like I would have gotten for the imperfect 2FP, 3FP. So, half cadena, half cadena. Compare that with the form over here, taf cadena, okay? But I just got a hey instead of a nutty prefix here for the na 2FP ending, half cadena, okay? So that's the, uh, the imperative in the hifil. We're almost done here. The participle is just like the imperfect yafkid, except instead of the nutty prefix, participles now, as we've been seeing for the rest of the stems outside of the kal and nifal, have a prefix mem. Same A-class vowel, silent shava, the same kirik yod. Mafkid, no ending if it's masculine singular. If it's feminine singular, what am I going to add? That's right, a comet's hay right here. So looking at my hifil participles, what do I have? In all cases, mem prefix, A-class vowel, silence, shiva. Muff, 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 and muff. What's my theme vowel? Kirik yod, kirik yod, kirik yod, kirik yod. And then... Zero, a, im, ot. Those are my participle endings because participles are verbal adjectives. And so they take all the adjective endings we've already learned. All right. So mafkid, mafkida, mafkidim, mafkidot. In all the other forms, when we had that kirik yod, it was stressed. But these vocalic endings here are going to pull the stress to the end for the participle. The final two forms of the principal parts are the hifil infinitive construct and infinitive absolute. Both of these have the hifil he, both of them with the A-class vowel under it. Remember, the hifil has the I vowel only in the perfect, okay? So A vowels everywhere else. Silent shiva is under root one. The difference between the infinitive construct and the infinitive absolute is the difference between the kirik yod form and the sere form for the theme vowel. Hafkid the act of causing to a point, and hafkeid is the infinitive absolute, which often will have the strengthening use. Surely he caused to a point, okay, or something like that. Now, going down to the page two material, here I leave room for us to write in the form, so the basic form is haf with the kirik yod for the infinitive construct, hafkeid, Hafkid, and if I want to add a 3ms pronominal suffix, what am I going to do? I'm going to add haf, got to put that kirik yod in there. I'm going to just add the holom vav for the 3ms pronoun. Hafkido, hafkido, 
Hafkido. The absolute is distinguished from the construct in the hifil only by the theme vowel, Hafkid, instead of Hafkid. And remember, for the infinitive absolute, I never add suffixes to those. It's only the infinitive construct that takes pronominal suffixes and takes um, you know, prepositions uh, attached to the front.